and we are going to connect to the live streaming service which should be in just a moment i believe we're live i hope we're live if we're live then welcome to the show i see everybody now good deal welcome to the show everybody welcome look at all the people that we have in the super chat bill h welcome gary simons or simmons uh, john wayne eric ppg lear lift paramotor joshua marsh care ppg jim snard from canada a welcome we got so many people here thank you very much don't forget to say hello in the super chat we might be giving away something tommy mosley in the house shane wyman welcome everybody this is sean simons also known as ppg grandpa you're watching clear prop tv listening to paratalk.org welcome everyone uh, as we normally do, we say hello to everyone in the chat. So let's go ahead and start off with our very own Linda Anderson, Paramom USA. Welcome to the show, Linda. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Welcome, where's welcome, the, everybody. Where's welcome the pom poms? Hi. Pom poms. Oh, oh, right here. There we go. Yay! Yay. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Yes, I'm the cheerleader. I'm the cheerleader of the bunch. Yes. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, my guests, Mark and Lena. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Good I promise you won't be disappointed. We're going to have a blast here. Thank you, chatters, and my viewers for coming on tonight and joining us on Monday night, my favorite night of the week. Don't tell Robert that. We won't and, tell him. Uh, no, no. <laughs> and uh, if you want to catch Robert Michaels, you can catch him on Thursday night, paraglidingchuck.com. And I'll be right there hanging with everybody. And uh, like I said, thank you so much. Absolutely. If you want to be on the show, make sure you get up with Linda Anderson. Go to paramomusa.com. It forwards over to her Facebook page to say, yo, I want to be on PPG Grandpa's Paramotor Podcast, Clearprop TV, paratalk.org, and she will hook you up. So thank you very much, Linda. Welcome to the show. We also got Jim from Canada, A, eh? from carepp.com and careppg.com. Welcome, Jim. Hey, how are you doing today? I am doing great. Look what I finally got in the mail, guys. Some stickers. I've been out of stickers. So if you want stickers or requested stickers, Jim just sent me a whole bunch. They smell like maple syrup. So I will get these out as soon as possible. Jim, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us, buddy. Thank you for having me on. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, we know every, every, every uh, Monday we ask you, how many flights have you taken? What, what flight are you on? Uh, I think it's 118. 118. Good deal. Ooh. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, buddy. You know, you know if you want to get up with uh, Jim's crazy shenanigans, go to careppg.com. If you need some stickers or want something printed, he'll hook you up. Just go to careppg, no, pp.com, carepp.com, right? That's right. Awesome. Thanks, Jim. Welcome. We also got Will Fly from Will Fly PPG. He's driving home right now. How you doing, bud? I'm doing great, man. Just coming back from the best flying of my life. It was uh, awesome. Yeah. I'm still on that high, you know, but it's a grand opening here at Bucky's and thought we'd check it out. So I'm going to slip off of my phone so that I can get on my computer and uh, join you guys. Awesome. We'll be so, there. We'll see you in just a moment, guys. Well, Thank you very much. Grab a bag man. of the dark, uh, the dark, be uh, dark chocolate beaver nuggets. They're really good. Got some yeah. on the way home yesterday, other day. <laughs> Well, here we go. I'll see you soon. All right. Thanks, Will. And I guess we got Will Fly's brother, Jerry Fly? Yeah. There we go. <laughs> All right. And uh, Jerry's just going to hang out with us on the panel. Thank you very much for joining us, Jerry. But it's not about mm -hmm. you guys. You know, it's not about the panel. It's not about me. Tonight is about Mark and Elena Honeycutt. They are amazing people. If you don't know Mark and Elena Honeycutt, oh my God, they are adorable. They're cute. They're <laughs> humble. They fly paramotors and they've been on YouTube for quite a while. So welcome Mark and Elena to the show. Thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. It's I was I miss bad apples. I was under the weather and I didn't want to bring my under the weather to bad apples. Uh, and I missed you guys so much. I, I cannot believe I missed you at bad apples. But tonight, uh, I guess we need to ask you how bad apples was. But first, before we do that, 
I don't know if there's anybody out there in the super chat that doesn't know Mark and Elena Honeycutt. Matter of fact, guys, if you're in the uh, super chat, let us know. Do you know Mark and Elena Honeycutt already? Or are they like somebody completely new that you never heard of before? Mark and Elena, welcome to the show. We appreciate you. Tell us a little bit about how you got into paramotors and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Cool. Yeah. Um, so back in uh, 2014, I uh, bought a paramotor, really old one on Craigslist, and me and a buddy self-taught ourselves in a, in a peanut field in the middle of Alabama in the middle of the day, and uh, my first two flights were engine outs, and that's how that's how I learned, and uh, ever since then, I've been flying. I kind of took a break and bought new gear in 2016, but um, yeah, I've been flying since then, and I've been flying lots of aviation stuff since 2007, um, so yeah, that's, that's how I did it. Mm -hmm. How'd you do it? <laughs> and, and yeah, and how about your amazing wife, Elena? Um, well, uh, Mark Honeycutt slid into my DMs and then I started learning from him <laughs> pretty much immediately as soon as we started dating. Um, we talked about it a bunch before we ever even hung out. I had told him I was like interested in it. So pretty much our first date was my first kiting session. And then our second date was Bad Apples 2018. And I kited a bunch there too. <laughs> yeah. Good that job, is, Mark. That is so, <laughs> it's very, awesome. You did good. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's really awesome. Now, you guys uh, um, have joined up with PPG Pirate, I believe, and started a new company. You want to talk about that? Yeah. So, PPG Pirate, which hearing that was weird because I didn't even know it at first but PPG Pirate <laughs> is uh Brooke Sheffield he had a red pill paramotor and he was teaching in uh primarily mountain wait Johnson City Tennessee um and then I was trying to do tandems in the Asheville area and then we were like you know what let's just join up so we joined forces and we um we kept the logo but we changed the name to Pinnacle Paramotor and so Pinnacle Paramotor is uh me and Brooks flight school and we do um like seven day trainings, uh, session trainings, uh, sell gear, and we do tandems as well. Uh, Brooke has a big old Fly Products Eco 2 light with the road tax engine that he, he takes people on. Pretty awesome. So now you guys are, are uh, now you've had this for about a month or so. Is that is that right? You've been training for about a month over at Pinnacle Paramotors? I've been training for a few months with Brooke and then Brooke has been training. Um, I don't know how long he's been training a year, year and a half to, I'm not sure. Um, okay. I might send him a text to you where he's at, see if you'd join in in this chat, but um, yeah. All right. Um, we got some questions in the chat. Who wants to ask the questions that uh, are in the chat, Jim? Yeah, we got a question from Nick Griffith. He's wondering if you guys left a chair <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I oops. Uh, no, we didn't leave a chair. So I don't know. Had bad apples. <laughs> no. Here I was thinking it was like a one wheel chair or something like that. Last year we left a chair, but not this year. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're doing better. That's great. <laughs> so uh, then we also have a question. Do you guys know who won the paramotor at Bad Apples? I think it was. Jack from Team Fly Halo, I think. I could be wrong, but I could have sworn. Jack Queest Burton down in Navarre oh. Beach won it. Oh, am I wrong? I'm wrong then. Yeah, I don't know. Everybody calls him Jack Burton. Cool. Oh, so, Jack won it? Jack won it? His name is actually Jacques. 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 Jack won the motor? Yeah, he won it. Oh, that's um, cool. That's okay. awesome. Cool. Oh, I got it right. Yeah. I, I, guess I call him Jack. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, same. Jack. I call him Jack. Cool. Okay. Hey, hey, Jack. Go, Jack. 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 Is that how you, you have to say his name? Jock, not Jack. Jock. It's the, Jock. it's actually, we both have the same name. In <laughs> English, it's Jim. <laughs> Seriously, we we believe you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. On another note, 
<laughs> All right. Now, before uh, before the show started, we started talking a little bit about uh, your your new paramotors that you have and uh, the paramotors that you fly. And I'm sure that some of the questions that are going to be popping up are uh, because this happens all the time. What are your go to wings? What do you fly right now? And uh, what's your next motor that you would like to have? Um, so this is how it went down. I went to Bad Apples with the intention of coming home with a different pair of motors. So I brought some cash with me. So, and I had to plan to sell my McFly on the way home. So yesterday I bought a Flag Products Rider, double hoop, 140 prop, factory R. And then a couple hours later, I sold my McFly <laughs> on the way home in Atlanta. And I, I bought that uh, fly products from One Up Adventures. Um, and also, we bought an Air Conception uh, Revolution 200, which is pretty darn new. Um, that is on its way. It should be here anytime. It's in, it landed in Indianapolis. And then um, that one's for me. That one's for Elena, for sure. Because we sold, we just <laughs> sold the Nitro 200 that I had bought in 2018 that she always flew. So she needed something. Um, I don't know. We've been buying a lot of stuff. I've bought like two reserves in the last few days and <laughs> all kinds of stuff. <laughs> but yeah, we haven't, uh, well, the revolution hasn't got here yet, but I'm really excited for it to get here. Eric DeFore let us kind of put, um, he has a revolution and he let us um, put it on our back and just get a feel for it. And it's like really, really exciting. I cannot wait to get it. Um, that's just like, in my opinion, Nitro, which the revolution is, I guess, being promoted as like kind of like a vamped up Nitro. Um, that's like my perfect motor to me. It, I, I like, I, I just can't get on board with the Natum 80. I really try to like them, but it's just not enough power for me, especially because we're in the mountains. And so we kind of need a little bit of oomph to get up and away. Um, but the Moster is a little too heavy for me. And I have a hard time pull starting it. Um, they're great motors, but I like something like right in the middle, which is kind of what the Nitro or the Revolution um, offers. On Actually, I think what they're saying is the Revolution actually has similar power to a Moster 185. So I'm excited about that. It's a nice lightweight motor and it has e-start, which I really like. <laughs> um so yeah hopefully that'll get here this week and we can fly it asap yeah it's dual start um which is nice because our nitro 200 was strictly e-start which was fine it the nitro 200 e-start was actually very reliable i mean i never had issues in four years but um but this one will have a pull start too which is good just in case for backup and it's clutched our nitro 200 was not clutched so then wings though, I'm still rocking the Rama Flex, still like it. Uh, but I also got a new free flight wing that I like to motor with. It's a Gen Falcon. I mean, Gen Falcon, <laughs> yours is a Gen Falcon. Mine's a Gen Explorer too. And that's, it is a free flight wing, but it's really nice to motor with it too. Um, and both of those are 20 meters. So that's the wings in my quiver. <laughs> yep. And then I got the Gen Falcon 20 um uh ozone buzzy five which i've had for a long time and actually i just got an invoice from superfly today for a uh gen fuse three which i'm really excited about for tandems wow that is so cool i got a gen vantage three it's the motor uh, uh free flight hybrid one I, I really like that i have i want to get a, a falcon I, I think a falcon would be pretty cool um yeah. And, and I know somebody else that has a Falcon. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit about the, have you flown the Falcon a yeah, lot? So, you, so tell us a little bit about the Falcon and, and what do you think about it? I think it's a, uh, I mean, it's been a great wing for me. Um, I had a lot of fun adventures on it in Korea. That's actually where I got it. Uh, Chris Santa Croce from Superfly hooked me up in Korea. I literally went to the gin factory in Korea and picked my wing up and it was, it was super cool getting to see where it comes from. Um, and yeah, so I, that's where I first got my wing. I flew to a ton. I flew to different, I flew to islands and camped. I, I mean, I flew all over Korea with that thing and I'm still flying with it. It's been great so far. I mean, I love it. 
I, I have to admit that when I first started thinking about getting into paramotors, I was looking around online and you came up, um, Anthony Vela and some kid Tucker, somebody. And, uh, you know, Tucker, I guess is all right. But man, I tell you what, your adventures uh, over in Korea, you know, Tucker got, I know, uh, your adventures in Korea really seemed like it was really fun. I mean, you free fly, you motor. Uh, what is your favorite? And um, how do you hop back and forth from motoring to, to free flight? Yeah, that's hard because um, they're, they're so different um, and they're both so enjoyable. Like, I mean, the beauty is like, I could go paramotor in the morning go midday flying free flying and then go paramotor at night and i've definitely done that but there's a whole different challenge to free flying because like you might spend five hours prepping and get a five minute sled run and then it's all over you know because but once when you when you do all that prepping and then you actually have a long flight it feels really rewarding um it's just fun no motor noise or anything nice and quiet now elena do you free fly too or you just motor Yes, Mark is definitely the more experienced free flyer of the two of us, but I have done a, a bit of free flying. And it's funny because like I maybe have done free flying in more states and country than than somebody who might have way more hours than, than me. Like my first free flights were in my first like 15 free flights were in Korea. And then um, I went and got training in Oklahoma. And then I, like every time we go to Utah, which we like to go like pretty much a couple times a year, we go out there to fly. So, and then here we, we do it around here some too. So, yeah. That is so cool. You're in Oklahoma. You're, you're right next to me. Uh, where, where'd you, uh, where'd you fly from? What mountains? Um, it was with Britton Shaw and kind of his gang out there at um, Buffalo Mountain and Panorama. Tallahina. Is that okay. Tallahina? That's, that's, that's who trained me too. And I was out there too on the mountains and stuff. So that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, we love, we love Britain. Yeah. yeah, Britain's an awesome guy. That was yeah. pretty awesome. Okay. Um, I think we got some questions in the chat. Yeah. Yeah, we do. We're wondering, are you doing Pinnacle full time right now? Um, so yeah, Pinnacle Paramotor is I guess you could say it's my full-time job, yeah. I mean, got out of the military July 16th of the last year, and um, it's my, I guess you would say, one of my primary sources of income, yeah, pretty much. And, and we're wondering, do you, or Julian Gates was wondering if you teach flea, flea flying, free flying, as well as paramotor. So we don't teach free flying, um, but if you wanted to learn in this area, we have a guy that teaches free flying um, in the Hendersonville, Asheville area as well. So we could put you in touch with that guy. We don't, um, you know, we're trying to figure out a little, maybe a, some kind of deal, package deal where students could get both done if they're here. But yeah, we got someone around here and there's good places to learn. Cool, cool. So uh have you got any plans to build a platform at your place so that you can launch? Man, I was just talking about this with Pablo. Pablo helped me fix my French drain from afar at my house. And he was also trying to figure out how to build a ramp to launch from my house. And maybe, maybe in time when I, when I, cool. I think PPG, cash. PPG, the other Nick asked that question. So maybe he's got some inside info on it. Hmm. Yeah, it would be, um, I'm looking out the window and thinking about it right now. And, um, really, this spot's not ideal for free flying, because if you sink out, you're, you're in the trees, whereas like with the motor, that's, I launch with the motor because I can instantly give it power and then get into the lift and get off the power. So, so you live in the mountains right now. Um, uh, how high are you right now as far as um, altitude above sea level? This, uh, where our house sits is about 3,400 feet. And then our training field is about um, 1,800 to 2,000 feet. I think it's 1,800 feet, you said? Yeah. Uh, does that cause any issues as far as um, getting students in the air as far as that uh, altitude or everything's pretty okay? Yeah, everything's fine. I, I mean, this is where I 
primarily, well, I actually wouldn't say primarily spent most of my time flying here, but I'm pretty used to it. That's um, mine like too as well. Yeah, it's not too bad, is it? No, I don't think so. Yeah. It's a lot better in the winter time. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a hot day. I mean, if you, when your density altitude is high, it's a little. It can be a little more difficult, <clears> I suppose. But nothing's harder than a a morning nil wind flight when the grass is wet, anyways. No matter where you are. <laughs> That's true. Um, we're we're about three hundred feet above sea level, so I think that we have a, a little bit more lift than you guys. Um, be because you guys are up in the mountains, do you uh, up your wing size or up the students' wing size, or how do you judge wing size for students where they're actually located, or how do you guys do that? Just based off their weight. Mainly. Off just their weight. Yeah, we don't really have to adjust for um, any kind of altitude up here. We're not. It's not. Uh, maybe if you were much higher, but not not really here. The students would know how to adjust their carburetor for different altitudes. Yeah, and generally here it's not bad either. I mean, if you're adjusted for sea level, you'll be fine here as well. I mean, you could adjust it a little bit for. Um, Some guys use like switch out their spark plugs between like summer and winter, but not much, uh, not much else. All right, um, we got a lot of people here in the panel. We got uh, Brooke Sheffield. Looks like he's here. Good, good to see you there, Mr. Pirate and JP Tulo will fly. Jerry fly. Uh, anybody on the panel have any questions for Mark and Elena? JP we got Tulo? another question from Mike Pendleton. He's wondering if you're going to be teaching PPG three ratings. PPG three. Um... That would be a good question for Brooke Sheffield. He'll have to chime in on that one for sure, because I'm the one with the ASC rating, and he's the one with the US, uh, the USPPA rating. So he would uh, he'd be the guy to ask there. Yeah, we definitely do PPG three. Uh -huh. um, we've already had some people come through and take it already. So yeah, we're here for that. Um, and for our students, they're able to come back and check out for PPG three without any additional charges as well. That's cool. That's awesome. And like I said, I joined up with Brooke um, pretty recently. So he's been doing it a bit, a bit longer than me. So he knows the ropes of that a little more. So yeah, I got a question for you, Mark. What made you want to start teaching? Um, just sitting around doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> good reason man <laughs> yeah, it's been enjoyable i mean when um i'm not going to dime out who it was but when a grown man lands and just starts bawling crying just a full release after his first flight it's pretty pretty emotional to see it's pretty awesome to see how life change life changing it's it is. tired of seeing that do you nope <laughs> yeah yeah totally agree DP has joined us on the panel. Welcome, DP. Glad you made it, buddy. Um, any other questions on the panel before we continue our interview? Somebody asked why we ditched the MacFly. We didn't want to ditch the MacFly, <laughs> uh, but we had to get something we needed rather than something we we like really wanted. Yeah. So I really love the McFly. I we don't sell it. Um, but I'm going to say that it's awesome. Like it has the best torque compensation of anything I've flown. Like it, if you get the one with the carbon fiber spars, so I was flying an extra large frame carbon fiber spars, the engine is offset and you have the bar, the swing arm compensation and you're just going along and you hit full power and that thing just doesn't even move left or right. It's amazing. I really enjoyed it. It was it was sad to see it go. Like me, Judson Graham was sitting next to me when I was got apples when I was cleaning it up and about to sell it. And he's like, "So why are you getting rid of the golden child?" Or what did he say? He said something like, "Oh, that. your your golden paramotor." The golden paramotor. I'm like, dude, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> that was it, it's such a nice motor. I really liked it for Mark, and I thought. Like, man, when you saw him flying, the netting was like green and his wings greened and it was just like a sexy setup. Yeah. But uh, like our uh, plans for this new Fly, pod fly Products uh, rider is to put it on a flash cruise cruiser eventually so that we can 
do uh, tandems and and be able to take students up um, as well as Brooke. He's already put it, taking people up, but I mean, we have a foot launch set up for tandem, but we really um, wanted a good motor for a trike. And so <laughs> had to give up one to get the other, but. Yeah, the McFly does have a, it actually has a pretty darn good tandem trike, but um, it's hard to beat. Uh, it's hard to beat Fly Products trikes, to be honest. I mean, they're really good. Awesome. Uh, DP, were you going to say something or no? No? Okay, I Just thought you were. Oh, okay. I, 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 when I asked if there was a question, I thought you were going to say something. No, sir. Um, uh, JP, anything? Uh, I, I got my Mac fly right about the same time that Mark did. I remember that. It was like he put out a video like right around the time I was putting mine together that he got his, and I was like, oh, get the heck out of here. Did you, um, did you get the same one as me? It, it was, I have the smaller one, um, but it was the Moster with the carbon spars and uh gray netting how straight does that thing fly it is it's it's wicked it's it's perfect it's like zero effort and it's but it's not draggy either you know i i think it's got the perfect mix of you know just all the right stuff now it's discontinued no they no they still have it yeah we just had to get rid of ours but yeah that thing flies straight as an arrow yeah, it's great. I think it flies straighter than the Scout, you know, because the Scout has the carbon fiber spars. And I remember flying because I've flown Tucker's a long time ago and maybe flown another one. And it does. It has great torque compensation to the Scout, but the McFly, I thought, flew a little straighter. So it is McFly and not McFly. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I love McFly. That's you know. I know. I I think <laughs> I think of Back to the Future every time he says McFly. Yeah. I'm like, hello, oh. McFly. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Um, we also got some more questions in the chat. Who wants to ask those questions? Well, you got uh, Bill H. Let's see, Mark. Did we already cover the next flying you guys are going to attend? Um, yes. Yeah, so definitely moonshiners and then. I think endless foot drag and maybe Brooke and I like schedule classes around the flyings. I think the other one was in Indiana. What's that one called? Oh, um, I haven't been to that one, but I can't remember what it's called. The flying right. Indiana. Can't remember either, but that's right above me by a couple we, hundred. We miles. talked about Dave Purdens. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a yeah. Dave Purdens. Yeah. If you haven't been to Purdens, highly recommended. I haven't I've heard that been one's there. Really I might... good. It is good. Where where is right. Dave Purden's uh, flying? Portsmouth, Ohio. So Ohio. South yeah. West, South West, West West Portsmouth. Patty area. Okay. Right on the Ohio River. Every morning, the fog rolls in right over the river, but oh. not such that you can't fly. You just fly right over it. There's like a river of fog. It's absolutely breathtaking. I've got some fantastic photos from from that. It, it, you can't beat it. It's so That's nice. Awesome. Yeah, we'll have to. I think we're going to go to that one. I got some family. It's usually in like the beginning of September, I think. Cool. So, yeah. Isn't that when it wins endless foot drag this year? It's September, I think, 19th through the 26th. I'd have to confirm that with Sean Hayden, but yeah, it's in September as well. Labor Day weekend. Is there dates for Moonshiners yet? I think so. Hmm. August, something, probably. Yeah, I'll there is. I just okay. don't know exactly what it is, but it has been posted. I'm going to PPG Zone. Yeah, you can go to flyindirectory.com and it forwards over to the PPG Zones uh, fly-in that they have. They, uh, he tries to keep up with everything Josh does and, and puts it on there. If, you're, if they're missing or if we're missing a fly-in, just email Josh over at PPG Zone and he'll put it on the flyindirectory.com. Cool. You can do it yourself as well. There's a spot where you just click on there and you can enter it in. But it, okay. Hey, since we got so many people up here, it's a 730 real quick. Brooke, if you turn your phone sideways, we'll be able to see you a little bit better. Let's go ahead and get a, a thumbnail real quick. Who's, who's into a thumbnail? Who can do a thumbnail? I think I might have to do this thumbnail. Maybe or if I could do that with my... <laughs> All right. Three, two, one, cheese. I think we did it. I heard it. I heard it. I heard a click. That was I me. Think. <laughs> uh, JP, are you on? A, are you on your Mac too? Did it again. And if you are, 
You're on mute, so I can't hear you. Yes, give me just smile. one second. Yeah. All right. Everyone so, smile. Wait, 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 wait. Two, two and wait, 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 wait. <laughs> hey, hey, no makeup. Okay, okay hey, go ahead. Got a call for makeup. Two and five quarters. Here we go. We she it. takes off her glasses. I put on glasses. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. That is so awesome. That's funny. I got to teach you right. Jeez. <laughs> Glasses on. Keep the glasses on. It looks great. Well, if you don't have the glasses on, the picture will be blurry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. my goodness. Funny. Funny. So, okay. Moonshiners, EFT, Dave Purdens are the uh, flyings that you uh, plan on uh, going to, probably for sure. Yeah. And, um, I'd like to attend Salt and Sea one day. I missed out on that. Oh, I'd love to do that. Stinky. Too. Yeah, stinky. Isn't it stinky? <laughs> and the Flying Circus. That's I mean, a, that's a stinky place. Yeah, I mm. saw. Um, I think, uh, Press Slick is wondering if you guys have met Jade Lear, Flying Flamingo. And if you want to be on. Have you met uh, Flying Flamingo Jade? Yep. Uh, I don't think so. Girls just want to fly. She was the one with all the cool shirts hanging up on, along the tents, like 10 or 15 shirts hanging up. She had right. some cool yeah. underwear, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she did. I don't know. Will, did you see those at, at her table? Oh, was that I Steve Minty? Those were hanging up. I ran into them several times. Oh God! Don't tell me Steve Minty put them on. Is Steve Minty leave oh, his underwear up there somewhere? Steve Minty didn't put them on. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, but uh, Steve is my my uh, favorite fashionista. I call him my fashionista. Yes, I wouldn't know how to have that stuff looked if he didn't try them on first. I, you know, because then I have to know if I like it or not. He's better than that at top mark, though. That, Mark, what year was it? Was it last year or the year before you flew with a blow-up doll? Oh, my God, that's right. <laughs> that was legit. That was uh, 2018. You know, 2018. Actually, yeah, because yeah, Eric. Long time ago. Eric from, uh, Aviator PP, Eric from Aviator PPG wanted me to do a review on the Nitro, and I was like, all right. So I took that doll up and did a review for him and didn't say anything about the doll in the video. <laughs> I'm doll. <laughs> My gosh, that was so funny. Yeah. That's awesome. So do you plan on doing any other fun videos like that uh, as far as like having dolls or things like that and and reviewing or what, what are your plans in the future for more videos? I should have a, um, I'm, it's the Revolution 200, since I'm getting that and there's really not any good information out on it, I want to do a good video on that one and uh, assemble it and run it in and let students use it and whatnot and, uh, and let people know what that's all about. And uh, also probably the Fly Products Factory R rider that I got and then um, a Parajet Maverick as well. <laughs> um, yeah we just have a bunch of uh, like bunch of motor reviews yeah pretty much because we just bought a bunch of random stuff and uh maybe some reserve stuff i don't know i got i got like some really big reserves recently i got a beamer beamer 170 light so that'll bring me down real slow i got um charlie steerable 220 um which i'm gonna use for tandem so we got all kinds of fun gear Is do, the you beamer steerable? do you i got a beamer right. it's terrible um okay I, I, I got a Beamer. Um, I, I need it repacked, but I don't know if I want to go up and and toss it to see how good of steering it is or not. But um, <laughs> have you ever thought about going up and, and throwing reserves and talking about the reserves that you're selling to? Yeah, actually. So we have an SIV um, tow club here and they're, they keep asking us to join. But, you know, do I want to spend, you know, $2,000 to join the club or not? It's a good deal if you're doing SIV a lot, but um, so if I was in that scenario, I'd throw the reserve. I, I think it'd be fun to throw reserves and do like re reserve reviews. That would be have, interesting. Have you ever done an SIV? Yeah, with Andy Fuller down at uh, Skylab SIV. Mm -hmm. I actually threw, um, I threw a few reserves there. I almost threw I up after watching that. Three. 
have you ever thrown a reserve outside of an SIV? No. Nick Griffith wants to know. No, no just I threw uh, three there and um, I haven't thrown one outside of it. Luckily, we did witness some guy throw a reserve at Bad Apples, but he is totally fine. He landed and I forgot he got all his stuff out of the tree, which it's probably a good thing he landed in a tree. Will Will Fly knows this. He took a video of it, but um, me yeah. and Sean got him out of the tree. He didn't yeah. even break a prop. Didn't bend a cage piece. We totally saved his motor. He I don't know how. He, I don't know how he didn't bend his fr uh, motor when the they like cut it down and it hit the ground. Yeah, it, no, it, it almost hit the ground. We, me and him ran up and called it, but the winch was going as we cut the line. As Sean Hayden was at the top of the, the ladder, the winch, as soon as he cut it, we started pulling the, the winch line. And so when it swung down, it barely missed the ground by like maybe half a foot. Dang. Yeah, so like was... he didn't even break a prop or anything. Can you imagine like throwing a reserve? Yeah, and it was. Breaks, and then your paramotor almost gets obliterated <laughs> from cutting it down. Yeah. All right. And, and then By doesn't the way, at all. $150 reserve. That's what he paid for that reserve. 150 bucks saved his life. Wow. Well, man, it's, it's only worth $150. I'll tell you what, we would not <laughs> brave. I mean, then I thought it was like six, $800, you know. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I've, spent, I've spent like 10 Oh my gosh, 10 to 20 times that uh, recently. Brian cost me 2000 Yeah, they're not, especially these big ones I've been getting, they're not, they're not cheap at all. The Beamer that I got was 1200 but you're talking about um, the bigger ones for your trike? No, I mean, well, the 220 is um, for doing foot launch tandems, and I would, um, yeah, and triking to a certain degree. And then uh, the 170 is better for like solo or free flight tandems yeah and what do you think is better just just your opinion the round the square or steerable like a beamer well um i think they're all pretty darn good if you get the new stuff like we threw four reserves collectively in siv and and i think we threw some angel i threw a square <clears throat> she threw a square that all of them came out really good i mean also, Andy was repacking them. Um, did we throw any rounds? We threw a round. I don't know what it was, though. But yeah. I like the angel squares. Um, obviously, the beamer's really good. Like, professionals like Theo DeBlick only use beamers. Like, he has a, a video where he's he throws, like, six emergency beamer. And they always open very fast, and he lands on his feet most of the time. That's what I heard. I figured if I want to go down on a reserve, I want something that can steer. Can you flare with a beamer? Yeah, you can no, that's my thought. Um, it, I don't think it has tons of flare authority, but yeah, you can. And then also after SIV, like when I was first getting into paramotoring, I would get the lightest reserves because I just wanted lightweight stuff. And I still want lightweight reserves, but nowadays I get like bigger reserves. Like my personal reserve is a uh, Independence Ultra Cross 150. So, I mean, I weigh 160 pounds and I have a reserve that can support up to 330 pounds for myself. Um, so I just recommend big reserves for, um, so you come down nice and slow if you ever have to use one. Yep, smart. I agree. I'd, I'd rather land on my feet than break an ankle. Um, and I, I'm afraid that, especially where I am and you are too, you're in the mountain stuff too. So, you know, there's lots of power lines, there's trees, there's rivers. And if you're going to throw a reserve, I'd want a little bit of ability to maneuver around obstacles that I don't want to land in. Yeah. And I think that's the benefit to the steerable. Um, uh, like this Charlie, actually the one, the Charlie steerable I just got, I didn't even know it was a thing. It's actually a square steerable, which is kind of weird um it's kind of interesting but i doubt it has much forward speed but at least maybe you could get a turn in uh to maybe get away from an obstacle or something but i doubt it has much forward speed and what'd you say that was charlie uh, who makes uh, it c-h-a-r-l-y i think is the uh, name of the company okay. um I'm, the proper name i'll have to look it up so that's a square reserve that's steerable i, have, I haven't heard about that one so i'm gonna have to look that up 
Yeah. That's what, like, that's what I like about doing these podcasts. You always learn something. I mean, it's, it's awesome. I love this stuff. Yeah, check it. It's called the Charlie Diamond Cross uh, Reserve. So here's a question for you. Do you always fly with the reserve or do you fly with different reserves for different things and maybe not fly with the reserve in certain conditions? Or what, what, do you, what is your take on uh, reserves? I don't, I don't really ever fly without one. Like it's, that's why it's nice to have a front mount reserve. Cause like when we go places and we want to try stuff and they don't have a reserve on it, well, I can just throw one on the carabiners. Like for instance, aviator PPG at bad apples was had all their limitless new limitless paramotors on display without reserves on them. So I just threw my beamer on it and I felt a lot safer going for that flight. Yeah. And like when we've gone to literally any country like or when we go out to utah um and they're doing a bunch of free flying out there and we borrow gear from somebody we always the front mount's really nice as far as like switching up reserves our paramotors pretty much like we like to do a side mount because it's it's nice not to have it like slapping your lap while you're running so each of us always have a side mount that just always stays on our motors but for free flight um my harness my harness does have a side mount also, but we do have the one front mount and it's just nice for, we never know what situation we're going to find ourselves in. There's many times where that front mount has come in handy for like, oh, this doesn't have a reserve. Let's throw it on. Like Mark said, we just pretty much never fly without a reserve. Yeah. I think that's a really good thing. Real quick, everybody in the super chat, if you fly a paramotor, I know I ask this a lot. Do you fly with reserve or without reserve? If you fly with reserve, what do you fly? Yeah. Well, what do you pack? Yeah. What I reserve do you have, pack? I have more reserves than I have stuff to put them on. Do you really? <laughs> yeah, I have like, Weird. I'm looking at one right now that needs to go inside of something. <laughs> that is very interesting. I got one reserve. I got that Beamer with the, it's a front mount because I, I'm like you. It's like, if I want to try something else or use a different motor, it's really easy to change. I, I like the front um, the front mount. Uh, you guys in super chat, what do you think about front mount? Uh, in the panel, who flies with the reserve? <laughs> I have one. So I'm I, I'm in the same situation as uh, them. I've got a permanent on side mount on my MacFly that uh, I don't go up without it basically, and then I've got a Gin uh, flight dash container front mount container that i'm able to take with me and it just clips in to the main risers on any machine if i'm ever flying someone else's stuff or whatever that way you know which is really when you want to have you know reserve anyways if you're not familiar with you know whatever i i really like to have um that extra layer of safety of going up with a, a reserve that i know is good it's my own and everything so it's the uh the advanced companion uh, round square SQR. That's it's a like a, a hybrid. So, and it works really well. <laughs> yeah. And, well, and JP is the only person I know that actually has thrown a reserve, uh, you know, in a situation, actually had to toss laundry. It wasn't SIV. What happened? Uh, this was early on. This was I was probably a 30 hour pilot when it happened. Um, I was just uh, doing like mild, mild wing overs um, on a Pegasus 2. Actually, I scratched that. I was doing like a, a little spiral and um, I had uh, the Stabila line basically snapped um, and it like threw me into, you know, not a bar- barrel roll, but a kind of a roll as much of a role you can do on a Pegasus and uh, threw me the other way into a spiral and it just completely locked in. It didn't matter how much outside brake I, I put on because if you imagine it without the Stabilo, the tip, that wing tip is kind of just flapping in the air and uh, I wasn't able to pull out of it. And I started at 3000 and around the, the 1000 foot mark is where I realized, you know, everything I was doing wasn't changing the situation. So I threw it. Um, it worked. It saved me. I landed in some some corn and uh, lived to fly another day. So, dude, congrats. I love corn. 
that's why we should fly with reserves because you never know when something crazy like that's right happen. we're not even doing anything that insane and a line snapped on you i mean yeah. that's like it's like it comes down there was like a couple of weeks ago we were out in the field and there was a motor that didn't have a reserve on it and it was i think it was a a new student and he was like hey okay, well um will you test my gear out which i guess is that's pretty common for like new guys they're like i just <clears> got <throat> my gear man they want to instill some confidence in it so they're like going to their instructor or buddy and they're like will you just fly my gear but he didn't have a reserve on it. He had his, his reserves, but he was missing the medallions to, or the mallions, the medallions, medallions. the mallions. I like medallions. I like it. <laughs> yeah. we, should, we should officially medallions. change the name from uh, mallions to medallions. It's like medallions that. for me. I think during training, we, we've had, it took us like a couple minutes to figure out what the proper name was with some students. It was funny. So anyways, he wanted Mark to fly it and he's like, I have the reserve, but I don't have the Malians. And they were like standing there debating like, well, I mean, nothing's crazy going on. Like you could just take it really quick. You don't need a reserve. And we were like, meh. And then we stood there and I was like, and Brooke was like, if you want, I have Malians. And everybody was still kind of humming and hawing over it. And then finally I was like, let's just go get them. Let's just go get them. It's like probably 99% chance nothing's going to happen, but how horrible would it be if something did and all it took was like five minutes for us to throw it on? Mm -hmm. Like, and that's what it was. We went and got Brooks Malians, took his <laughs> off and threw him on that motor. Mark took it up. Everything was fine, but it's just a matter of like, if it had, we'd all have been just absolutely beating yeah. ourselves up. Yeah. Yeah. for yeah. not taking the five ten minutes that's all it was yeah we have um i think the reserve was off on that one um because it was we new were, we were it was new or we were swapping around so it was good to get it on there um for him but yeah we all our student units have reserves on there before they before they go up yeah this guy had like just gotten his new gear though and he had it he just hadn't attached it and was missing a million so you send students up with reserves yeah. Yeah, we do now. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> can I can I hear about this? Because that's yeah, yeah, that seems to be the opposite. <laughs> that seems to be the opposite of what uh, a lot of schools do. What's what's your uh, thought behind that? My thought is, I mean, a lot of schools might be like, "Well, we don't want our students to panic and throw out." Well, to be honest, like, I'd rather have them panic and throw it then not have it and they're up there and something actually really bad does happen you know like sure. god forbid a carabiner breaks because of some faulty manufacturing process and oh i didn't want to put a reserve on there because i was afraid they'd panic throw it you got no backup plan yeah. whatsoever without yeah what about what about throwing the reserve from like a hang point test yeah we do that while you're, while you're a, learning okay yeah. We have a simulator and we put a little reserve on the side and they can throw it. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thinking maybe a school should put at least a side mount one just to be careful. And you don't put the reserve on the main carabiner, right? You have it hooked up to the uh, to the um, harness. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Most most of the time the harness, but sometimes the main carabiners. Which obviously it's better to connect to the shoulder harness. You have, you have a second point of failure, but um, a lot of people connect to the main carabiner. Interesting. Uh, did anybody see in the super chat how many people actually were uh, talking about, you know, having a reserve or not having a reserve? Or did we just miss all that? No, I saw, uh, see, was it, was it Bill? We didn't have a lot of response from that. Okay. Let me go back through while you're talking about something else. I'll, I'll find it for you. Okay. Gary Fly, he wanted to tell you guys that he, he had to leave, but he wanted to know you to know that he's a huge fan of yours and he's been watching your videos since he started flying. And he wanted to thank you for your service as well. He says, uh, thank you for your service to the country. We wouldn't be able to enjoy this great sport if it wasn't for heroes like you. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Mark, for your service. We appreciate you, buddy. Thank you, yeah, man. Appreciate it. So, yeah, um, Sean, there was. Um, okay. 
So let's see, Bill H has an Independence 140 and uh, it's a front mount and John Wayne says he doesn't like a front mount, prefers a side mount, so assuming he has one. And uh, Greg Laney flies with a trike, but he uses it as a, uses as a reserve as a dash, dashboard for his phone. That's kind of clever, I guess. And uh, yeah, that's kind of yeah. a neat. So uh, Shane Wyman, just Shane Wyman just bought a reserve, haven't installed it yet. James Apco has a Apco made a 20. And I think that's what we got out of the tree. But it was an 18, yeah. So, yeah, Mac Fly Guy's got an Independence Control 140. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. So, I think that's about it. Cool. Yeah. Reserve talk is super interesting for some people. But I think after you do SIV and you throw some, like it actually becomes a lot more interesting. I don't know. Why. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's fun coming down on a reserve, reserve purposefully uh, when you, you know, you're told to throw it. And then, uh, you really get to see how reliable they are and it's kind of you know that, that, that that's the scariest part for me about a reserve if i ever had to throw one was the total not knowing where you're going to come down you know if, if yeah. it's not terrible you know am i going to land in a tree am i going to land in the middle of a lake i mean that's spooky before you're at, before you're throwing, I agree. You know? yeah i agree i mean argument is probably um some people would argue that it's best to land in the trees obviously you don't really have much directional control of the a round or square at all and sometimes not even with a regard <laughs> depending on the wind. but um if you asked I, and i'm only saying this because i like happened to sit in on one of chris santa croce's like classes and he said this but if you ask chris santa croce where what kind of terrain you should be doing fun stuff over where like maybe you know you're going a little big and and you might get yourself into a reserve situation he'll say over trees that makes sense because uh, Keegan said that he didn't, it, it was kind of like a cushy, you know, it wasn't like an a, abrupt stop or anything. It was kind of a cushy, you know, stop. Yeah. So, They're uh, more forgiving, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, of course, like they, or they always do SIVs over water. So, but that's like, I mean, if you're coming down by yourself, you absolutely don't want to be going in water. No. Um, SIV is such a controlled situation, but I guess if you're, if you have the option of having the chase boat and everything, water is going to be more pleasant. <laughs> if somebody can just come up and grab you than going in a tree. Yeah, I went to Andy's uh, SIV also and threw a reserve and that was a very interesting experience. Um, and I threw a round, which is why I got the Beamer because it's like, I went down pretty quick. And uh, uh, if it wasn't in water, if it was like on land or something, I'm thinking that I probably would have sprained or hurt myself uh, pretty bad I think I got really lucky like I came down so slow on mine my head didn't even get wet like I just like was like a teardrop into the water and so I felt really lucky that mine was so pleasant like it, I like got out of the boat and I was like giddy and I was like that was cool <laughs> yeah, yeah you were the, yeah. you were the poster child for SIV yeah yeah yeah. yeah, I still like to go watch the videos we made. Sometimes they're fun to, to go back and watch again. Yeah, it seems like every time, that, every time that I get a new wing, I go to SIV course just to see how that wing works. You know, even though I, I fly 28 meter wings, all my wings have been 28 meters. They all perform differently. You know, the Roadster 3 performed differently than the Gen Vantage, than the APCO uh, Lift EZ. I mean, they all did weird things differently. When you went and did your SIV, did you use your wing or one of Andy's? Both. Both. Now, when you used your wing, were you able to kind of feel what your wing could do that you never felt like before as far as, uh, you know, uh, motoring or, or paragliding? Could you feel it, Mark? Oh, <laughs> for sure, yeah. My, my Jim Falcon tried to destroy my life. I did like a full uh i was doing full frontals and some of them went all right and then one just like folded up in a ball and like sit me into like a sat and like a 50 percent collapse sat and uh i was grabbing the reserve and then everything started to come out and on riser twists and i let go of the reserve and i was like all right good <laughs> 
Yeah, coming out of riser twists, that's uh, that's pretty good. I ended up almost, uh, I was in the riser twist, and I'm like, should I try to fix it or should I throw the laundry? I'm like, let's see if we can fix it. Uh, after doing an SIV course, did you feel more confident as a pilot, like the first SIV course that you went to? Do you feel like a better pilot, more confident in your gear, your wing, in flying uh, before than before going to the SIV course? Yeah, I definitely think so, for sure. Yeah, I think it it instills confidence in your your gear, but it also is just it's one thing to be like, okay, I know what to do when if I need to throw a reserve, I know where to reach, and I know that I need to throw into clean air. And then it's a to- like a totally other thing when you're flying along and you gotta you gotta shake that diaper out and actually toss it. Um, Whereas like, even if you practice that on the ground, it's good because you realize how hard that those can be to actually pop out of their little pouch. Um, but yeah, I don't, that's all, that's all I have to say to that. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think talking about reserves and the safety aspect of our sport is pretty important also. Um, what other safety gear do you use when you go fly? Are you the type of person that always wear boots, a helmet? Uh, ear protection, floats, uh, Mark and Elena, how, how do you fly? What, what, are, what is your your safety things that you use? You know, I always wear a helmet, um, sometimes double hearing protection because I've got tinnitus. We with, both do. <laughs> um, no, but I like going, I'll go fly without shoes on. I mean, if I'm at the beach or something, but um, definitely if, flotation over water yeah. and then always a reserve, yeah. So I'll I'll say like kind of like a precaution thing though is like always have a phone or and just like some way of like you have an engine out and you get stuck somewhere of just being able to like call somebody or send the location or whatever. So that's like that's an important one because that's something that happens a little bit more often than throwing a reserve. It's just your engine goes out and you got to land in a random field and have somebody come pick you up. Yeah, it's not a bad idea for people to have like a Garmin in reach or something with them at all times when they're flying too. Because if you were to throw that reserve in the middle of nowhere, Georgia, and your phone has no reception, at least you'd have a Garmin in reach. You could hit a button and there comes a ambulance and a helicopter or something like that. And I actually have, I just recently got one of those personal locator beacons and sometimes I'll fly with it. Is it that spot that you're talking about? The the one that's cellular, that's not cellular, but um, from a satellite? Yeah. Yeah, it's, I forgot the brand, it's like lime green, you have to unfold it and an antenna, long antenna pops out and you press a button. Okay, and that's like a, a service that you got to pay for yearly or monthly or something? No. That's free? Yeah, yeah. as far as I understand, I mean, it was actually a gift to me, so I should probably look into it more, but I, I had been taking it with me on a couple different paragliding flights. Um, a Garmin and Reach, I don't know if you've got to pay for that one or not, I, I don't have one, but they're good things to have a little pricey, but not a bad idea. Gotcha. Hey, I have a question. You were talking about SIVs and uh, I, I sat in Andrew Fuller's SIV uh, little clinic or how he was explaining kind of the process, but you do to get to a full stall. What? I think we're losing you a little bit, Will. Did I just freeze? I think I just froze. We can hear you now. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, so the first SIV is the is the main purpose, kind of the, the main goal is to get to a full stall and how to recover it. Is that kind of the, the purpose of it? I wouldn't say I wouldn't say that necessarily, no. Um I can't speak for like other SIV instructors, but I think for Andy, he kind of bases it case by case. Like he looks at where the pilot's at and, um, and what they need to focus on first, first before they progress to that. I mean, I did them pretty quickly. I don't know. Maybe that's a question. That's the question for instructor, but, um, that's something we both did in SIV. And I think that was like, one of the biggest things I learned from there. I mean, we did all kinds of stuff, all kinds of like collapses and spirals and stuff, but the, the, but the stalls, 
there's like, those are, those are like really eye opening. <laughs> that's, that's one reason I didn't want to take an SIV because I was, a, I'm pretty much afraid of us of, you know, stalling the wing, but the way he had explained it is, it seems like a stall is like a reset, you know, to a lot of maneuvers and or to a lot of times when things go wrong, but he was explaining how, you know, no, we'll do like B stalls. I mean, we kind of, it's a, there's a progression to it. It's not like, okay, full stall, you know, which is what I was thinking it was going to be. So I guess there's the SIV can be done in stages um, and uh, not all at once, you know, like a, a zero to a hundred and like, you know, your first lesson. So uh, I'm considering doing that again. I, I mean, whereas before, I was like, no, nah, it's not going to be. Well, yeah, well, real, well, real quick, what um, I when I, I went to the I'm SIV course, it. when I went to the yeah. SIV course, a guy went there just to learn big ears. He didn't okay. care about about stalling. He didn't care about spirals or barrels or nothing. You know, he just wanted to know how to do big ears. So his entire weekend was learning big ears. That was it. Uh, when I went there, it's like, you know, I said, I want to feel what it feels like to have collapsed wings because one of the things that that scared the crap out of me when I first started was hearing about wingtip collapses and stuff like that. So I'm thinking, oh, wingtip collapse, oh, I'm going to fall out of the sky. You know, when you do a 50% uh, collapse and you're still flying straight, it's like, well, what was I afraid of? So you, you can actually go to an SIV course and say, hey, this is what I would like to learn. This is what I like to feel. Um, it's totally up to you. Mark and Elena, when you went there, did you ask, uh, you know, to, to learn certain things or you just went through Andy's uh, program? I think it was a little bit of both. I mean, I think I, I did way more than I thought I was going to do. I was like pretty surprised. Not so. Su I mean, I guess I shouldn't have been surprised. I didn't really have any like expectations for how much I was going to do but I did not think I was going to do sats and stalls. And I ended up loving doing those. So it's funny. I went in, I, I, I had like some fear going into it. Um, I definitely was very scared to do stalls, but then once I got into them, I actually enjoyed them and see the benefit in doing them. Cause like it can be a life-saving maneuver if you know how to do it to get yourself like you said, uh, it's like resetting your wing, right? If you get yourself in some trouble, you yeah. can reset your wing. Um, and uh, sats were a blast to me, and I didn't think I was going to get to do those. Who are you, Mark? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just About the I same. catered it to how we were progressing. And, um, I was just like, yeah, I want to do whatever. Yeah, he asked us what we wanted to do we're both not the type of people that are like, man, I want to do this and this and this. We're just kind of like, Hey, we're here to learn from you. So, you know, whatever you think. And I, I really think uh, Andy has this really good way of uh, going with his gut and kind of seeing what that pilot is capable of and, and what they are willing to do and maybe pushing them a little bit um, out of their comfort zone, but not past what they're capable of. Yeah. Um, I think JP has to go. Cool. You're on mute. Go, JP. Uh, go. Always a pleasure, guys. Mark and Elena, thank you so much. <laughs> JP, Freaking love you guys. Just like yeah, man, good to see you. Yeah. Thanks hey, for JP. all the, the great content over the years and sharing your lives with us and everything. It's uh, just fantastic. I think uh, two great, fantastic people like sharing their lives with the paramotor community. I think, uh, you know, a lot of people can can look up to everything you're doing because I think you guys got it figured out. Right. Thanks. Man. Awesome. Thanks so. For, yeah. Thanks for saying that. That's nice. Nah, I mean it. I mean it. So. I All right, guys. Awesome. You're a Bye. peach. Well, don't forget, JP is the president of the fan. Ah, yes, of the of the, <laughs> of the fan club. club. <laughs> of the fan club. Too, That's right. <laughs> Good night, man. All right, guys. Take it easy. All right. Bye. 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 Well, it is eight o'clock or a little bit after eight o'clock as we've, we've been doing this for an hour. Uh, how much longer do we have uh, you, Mark and Elena? Are you willing to hang with us for another 30 minutes or an hour? Or you got to go. I just want to make sure that we don't hold you up from anything. Sure. Yeah, we can. Hey, no pressure. 
No. <laughs> I, I mean, we talked about SIV for the whole 45 minutes, so. <laughs> well, we got another question. Of, we got another question about the SIVs. Do you think that uh, an SIV clinic should be mandatory before someone becomes a USPPA instructor for paramotors? And that's from, I believe it was James. So I'm not sure. Um, I mean that that would be interesting. I I don't think that's a bad idea. Uh, I don't at all think it's a bad idea, especially because, I mean, there's some people who are like, they flew for years before they um, became instructors. So they got a lot of hours and experience. And then there is some people that like super early on become instructors. Um, I mean, I don't think I'm the person to say it should be mandatory, but I do think it would absolutely benefit any instructor to have an SIV under their belt um just to even be able to i mean like describe what it feels like to do a full stall yeah. <laughs> or like yeah yeah you know, and maybe they've done them on their own too i mean i don't know uh i definitely think it's it would be beneficial though to um instructors to yeah. have that yeah yeah if you ask gamer tag, he's gonna say yes to that i think yeah. i've actually had that conversation with him and he, he's like yeah i think every instructor oh, yeah yeah yes. Actually, um, we got, it looks like Brooke said that he doesn't think it should be mandatory. He had done his for the great experience, but not necessarily to teach people yeah. you want to do. So exactly what you said. I mean, like you said, that dude went to go do big ears only. I mean, you could, you could be in an, almost being an instructor, you go to SIV and all you do is big ears and then you become an instructor so now you have your siv qualification if that were even a thing for us ppa and really That's all true. You do years so i mean it just depends like what you yeah I, I don't think it's necessary either but it's it's definitely helpful in terms of being able to describe things i mean it, yeah it just gives you another layer of uh knowledge to impart it's not our job it's not a us ppa jobs instructors to be teaching SIV level type stuff, but it's good to have that knowledge because um, students are going to ask about stuff well, like that. Here's what I think it's helpful with too. Sometimes it's important to describe things. I think whenever you've been a pilot for a few years and then you're trying to teach somebody that's brand new how to do it, you forget the things that weren't obvious to you in the beginning. And it's like, you forget that you have to harp on these little things of, of like safety and um, I mean, it's, it's like the littlest things of even like, you know, this is how you lay your, your risers down or whatever. The fundamentals. Yeah, the fundamentals. So I think doing things like SIV courses. Um, how do you even get Greer out of Grant? Um, <laughs> get what? Get what, Will? What? What are you saying? <laughs> All right, I do have something to say there. SIV doesn't make you any more qualified to be an instructor because you could just be really crappy at being an instructor in general. You could be a great pilot, but still be, but suck at getting the message across. So no, I don't think SIV is necessary. I mean, you've got obese basketball coaches that can't play basketball, but they're teaching basketball. But you know what I mean? Like it's, it's helpful, but no, it's not necessary. Yeah, I think it's just something good under your belt to say, hey, you know, this is what could happen. Uh, an SIV would be great maybe in six months or a year after, you know, graduating or something like that. Yeah. Um, that what I you agree with. I think you can do an SIV too soon. Uh, yes. I think if you, if you went to an SIV like 15 flights in, that would be horrible. I mean the towing part of it would be super difficult for you at that point because i mean the, the kiting is important when you're being towed up it's yeah. not like thoughtless to be towed up in an siv you kind of got to like be on it and make sure you're staying in a certain spot in reference mm -hmm. to the boat and everything and so somebody brand new might really struggle with that launch being towed up um and yeah i mean there's things I work at the airport and there's certain things that like, we don't teach them people like right away working out on the ramp, 
because you don't want to overload them with things that just comes later. There's a progression to it. So I think you can do SIV too soon. I agree. We, we had some wind um, one day where if your kiting skills was not on par, you had to do reverse, you have to turn around and that's being connected to the tow boat. And, you know, tell me, Mark and Elena, when you were being towed up there, um, you had to use some power on your arms to make sure that you stayed where you were. So it was almost like you were exhausted by the time that you got up to 4,000 feet. It was like, oh my God, I pinned off and now I'm sore because you know I'm trying to stay to this one side or something like that. At least that's the way I felt, but I'm an old grandpa. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of weird. It's definitely a weird feeling. Yeah, I think I was more like mentally strained. I wanted to like do everything perfectly. So yeah, I think I was so focused on doing the toe perfectly that uh, by the time you get get to pull off, you're like, whew. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Was there any questions in the uh, on the panel or the chat? Uh, okay. Just briefly, um, Tony Marzano wanted to know if Brooke Sheffield was single. He says he's asking for a friend. friend. Just throwing that out there. Brooke's but single. <laughs> Brooke's single. But there you go, Tony. All right, there we go. Tony, question. I'm going to say, Tony, you're a dork. Question for, I'll take tandems. Mark, question for Mark and for Elaine. What? Are we still on the brook thing? Brooke said, I think. <laughs> I, I didn't it realize that this ends. was a paramotor love connection, but apparently it is. <laughs> yeah. It never ends. 20 bucks is 20 bucks. Yeah, that's right, man. <laughs> that's what I, that's what they say. Hey, uh, Mark and Elena, what is left on like the biggest thing left to do on your bucket list thus far? In uh is it are we talking about paramotoring? Yeah, yeah, paramotor. Yeah. Oh man, we've got some secret stuff coming up for sure. Uh oh. It's it's so big that uh actually no one's ever done it. Secret. You're not going to McDonald's, are you, man? No. Oh, that's <laughs> I heard I heard that's never been done before. This will this will blow it out of the water, but um but Golden I'm Corral. also not Tucker God's channel, so it might not be that big of a video, but it, it's a bigger thing for sure. So no hints? No hints. No hints. Ah. This but it is horrible. They're Come like, on. what do you want to do? And we're like, something huge, but we can't tell you at all. But it's going to be awesome, but we can't tell you anything about it. But it is <laughs> paramotor related. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You'll see it one day. All right. Well, what, Tuck, Tucker Smucker. What's the biggest thing on your bucket list that you can tell us about? Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Um, yeah, really? Yeah. Because you've done like... a lot, man. So, I mean, yeah. <laughs> good well, question. I mean, well. there's so many countries to go to that's one thing uh but, i think we'd like to go back to korea sometime let's, well let's think some bucket list stuff i mean we did stuff in korea yeah we did a lot in korea i don't you going to egypt rub it in jeez i know right <laughs> <laughs> we did a lot of korea korea was awesome we still like just sit around and sometimes talk about like how cool that what an amazing experience it was and how like we would go back in a heartbeat is really cool there but um yeah i don't know i mean there's so many things we've talked about doing like everybody talks about somebody mentioned like egypt and um i don't know there's so many cool places you can go fly i wish we could fly at all the cool places i if think i have I, my bucket list would be um i want to one reason I'm working towards this track and like pinching pennies to get there is because I'd like to do something similar to what Project Airtime does, where they're able to give free tandems to people who are disabled or or people that aren't able to fly in some kind of way, or maybe they are able to fly, but you give them their first tandem for free, so that way one day they they can we can figure awesome. out a way to get you into the sky. Like I love what Chris Santa Croce does with oh. I'm wearing a shirt Project Airtime. Um, so that would be really cool to do that. That's a big bucket list of mine that I think I've been thinking about for years. We're big Chris Santa Croce fans, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> yeah, why would you be? I mean, yeah, he's awesome. <laughs> yeah, he's a good dude. So what are some of your favorite places to fly? I think where we live is absolutely beautiful. Uh, yeah. Around here is it's really great to fly. Moonshiners is killer flying too, though. Like Moonshiners flying has really pretty flying. Utah, 
love Utah. Every time, yeah, Utah is super cool. That's great for free flight because they don't have trees. <laughs> Not a lot of trees, at least. Yeah. Um, well, and there's just so many different places in this world that would be like way more way crazier than anything we've done we just haven't had a chance yet yeah somebody in the chat said iceland. ireland or did they say iceland, iceland which no, he's oh, iceland. Like, ireland I would, would be epic. totally go to ireland oh yeah for sure but iceland too yeah <laughs> what about your yeah. most epic flight like that just mind-blowing location where would that have been oh man Biltmore. That was pretty good. That was a fun. That was a fun. Biltmore play. was awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. We almost didn't even do it. <laughs> Where? It was cold that morning, I think. The Biltmore Estate in North Carolina. Yeah, yeah. that was like right. Yeah, that was Martin awesome. Got sent to Korea. We were. He was like about to leave for Korea, and we were like, yes. "We're gonna do this flight. We got to do it now." Um. So yeah, we squeaked that one in right before he got sent to Korea. Yeah, highly recommend that flight as long as you're not like flying right over <laughs> did you have to get some special anything for that no this um it's pretty close to Asheville airport so but you're under the yeah. shelf there, so you just got to keep that in mind but no nothing yeah. special but because it is a very they have huge influence in this area built more owns a large <laughs> everything of the land <laughs> are very wealthy like you don't want to do anything to make them mad or else it yeah. could ruin some stuff <laughs> right yeah man you did take off Take off what is it, runway three, four, and just head straight. Yeah, right. I'd say so many yes, so like what's one of the most like mind-blowing ones? Yeah. Flying through Charlotte's airspace was so cool. It was one of the coolest things. It's not even that it was like the prettiest flight in the world, but it was like a huge international airport that we got to buzz the runway twice. That was so cool. Yeah, Todd. Todd's in the chat. That one of our most epic flights is with Todd. Yeah, I mean, to be on a <laughs> runway that's two miles long and it, you know how slow we go and it takes forever to get down. To like <laughs> 15 minutes to, to go and we got to do it twice. So we were just like buzzing a huge airport for 30 minutes. It was so and, cool. And the white strip, the like white lines down the middle of the runway when you're landing in an airliner look pretty small, but when you're on a paramotor, they're literally like twice as wide as yeah. you or more. I don't know. There's like but the size of a uh, what if the size of a, a freaking runway, these right white strip. A bus. Yeah. 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 The, like when we were coming in, there's a couple of runways that run parallel to this outermost one that we were able to fly on. We were coming in and there's like a 737 just on approach right next to us. Like it, it's just so, it's really cool. That was a really cool flight. Yeah. I, if y'all can, if y'all have a friend in ATC at a class Bravo airport who can uh, coordinate with the city, the airport and who else did he, I don't know. He, he coordinated with like three different organizations to get the, to make it happen legally then definitely do it. <laughs> I would like to do it. I work at Asheville Airport for United and I would really like to one day like talk figure out who I got to talk to to be able to buzz the airport that I work oh, at. Oh, that'd be so yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be fun. I got a name for you, Elena. Bob okay. Carter. Bob Carter in the tower. In the tower at Asheville? Yeah. Good to know. I'm going to write his name. My wife down. was my, uh, that was my first, very first, I was her very first student and uh, she was my first flight instructor, Cindy Carter. She still instructs, wow. I think. Wow. And, and in case you didn't know, Will Fly actually has his GA, so he actually flies airplanes and paramotors. Cool. Cool. Wait, that was your first, Will? Or are they, they, they're still living? I was going for my private. Yeah. Yeah. She was okay, good. Uh, first instructor. Nice. Yeah, and you also know John Fadock at Hendersonville Airport. Yeah, and I'm. I, you notice I didn't ask if you said hello this time. Did you notice that, man? I didn't want to put you on the spot. <laughs> I, I can't remember if I've told him or not. I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> I don't see him as uh, much at all, really. <laughs> yeah, that's a great area to fly. It's just beautiful. Yeah, especially. But hey, yeah, hey, that's on my bucket list to fly around in a paramotor around you know hendersonville asheville you know never yeah. done that come on over i mean you're not that far not at all definitely yeah 
Is a Icarus race on your bucket list? Yeah, I was just talking to I think Judson at Bad Apples about that. I don't think they're doing one this year, but I I mean I don't think they've done one since like a long time. I'd like to do that for sure. And I think um yeah, I would do it. That's on my bucket list too. I'd fly across the country. I want to do that too. I want to do a lot of stuff that um Kirby. that requires money. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, get up with Harley Mon, uh, Mel. And, yeah, uh, he, he, Harley he, and some he, money. Yeah, yeah, with he does the 50x. He's flown in every single state, including yeah. Canada and or Canada, inclu including um, Alaska. Did I say that? Yeah, Alaska and um, Hawaii. Hawaii. Yeah, Hawaii. Yeah, when he was doing his flight across the country, when we were still living in Louisiana, when Mark, because Mark was still in the military, and. Uh, he wanted us to meet up with him but we actually were able to surprise him we like what did we do we drove to where no we flew all the way up. yeah you met him out in the middle of somewhere i can't remember where we launched from but we didn't launch from where he landed did we yeah we launched from Un a unplanned yeah we, we launched somewhere nearby and then we we like he pulled up like i mean it was like perfect timing like we were there and then he pulled up in the sky and i think he was really really surprised he didn't think he was going to see us in the sky but it was he was cool. just tired and ready to land yeah but we went <laughs> before, eight. before the i think 30 minutes after sun set he's trying to be legal so we had to get on the ground but yeah, it was cool. yeah i think that was the first video of yours i watched oh cool cool that was yeah. cool I have a question about the apps that you use. What kind of apps do you use to check weather? And do you uh, use any particular apps uh, as you're um, flying to keep track of your flights? Um, I generally don't keep track of my flights unless I'm uh, paired free flying. Um, and for that, I would use like fly, my Flymaster or I would use like Live Tracker. And then if I'm mostly when I fly paramotor, I'm pulling up Av Air because I have an Android, so I don't have a good app. So I use Avair for determining airspace and altitude and speed. And then for um, Elena, she'd use Fly Sky High. And then for weather, I do I primarily use Windy. Um, and sometimes I'll look at the local METARs at the airports nearby. Um, and then what's that one website that's like a man's name? <laughs> do you know what I'm talking about? Ryan, Ryan Carlton. Ryan yeah, Carlton. yeah. And then yeah, the balloonist. And yep. Brooke showed me iKite Surf, which is pretty cool too. Yeah, I use Ryan Carlton all the time. I haven't heard the one. What... iKite Surf. iKite Surf. Yeah. Okay. Um, Hot Buttered Productions uh, said they use Bumble. <laughs> <laughs> they use Tinder. <laughs> while in flight hey i mean if you had a if you're gonna land at your honey's site you know <laughs> so yeah that that's a good question uh, for all the people in the super chat do you use apps to fly as far as your weather and also keeping track of when you fly i use the sky fly high mostly because it'll automatically go over to uh, live track 24 for me so I can keep track that way. And Windy and Ventusky are my two wind uh, apps that I use pretty much all the time. How about you guys on the panel real quick? What do you, what do you guys use? Brooke, Windy. do you use any apps? I use yeah, PPQ I use, I mean, for the winds a lot. I just wind. use what Mark said. And Jim, I didn't hear what you said, bud. I use PPG zone for the winds aloft. I really like it because you can you can select the each hour that you want that's going in advance. And then it's got that's the right. direction. It's got like an arrow as a direction of the wind as opposed to the degrees. So it's really easy visual reference. And then it's got the inversions as well. So that's you know, right. One is better or not. PPG Zone uh, has one that's very similar to Windy, but it's a little bit more advanced. I forgot about that. Thanks for reminding me. I so. can't figure out how to make my Windy one, the winds aloft work. You need to hard click. Oh. Yeah, hard click on, if you're on your phone, hold down your thumb 
hit show weather picker. And then on the right, you have to go to the menu and you can <clears throat> roll to all the way up to 45,000 feet. Roll, okay. Yep, so. So it's like a hard press and then that thing will pop up. <laughs> yeah. I thought you said hard click. So yeah. because okay. of that, there were those little hearts on there. I'm like, okay, I'll try that. So, so the hard press opens up a different menu. Like, yeah. Look okay. at all these hearts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the hard press, and I don't know if you want to hard press on a heart, maybe just on like a blank spot. Hard press mm -hmm. and release, and then it'll show up the weather picker. I think I flew everywhere in South Korea. Why is he laughing so hard? No, I'm not. <laughs> Am I saying something funny? I don't know. No. Good night. <laughs> Spotlight. You gotta, you gotta yeah, know, yeah, yeah, show that again real quick because uh, uh, DP was laughing and we couldn't see it. Was there something private on my phone? <laughs> He's still laughing. Oh, yeah, man. That, that was a cool picture, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid to show it now. <laughs> doesn't take much to get DP laughing. No, it doesn't. <laughs> I still don't know why he's laughing, though. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, well, but since he's not going to tell us, I got one more good app. It's called, okay. I think I pay for it, and I use it mostly for free flying, but it's called XC Skies. It's, and it's really good for... Uh, if you guys start thermaling midday or whatever. Cool. Oh, hey, there was a there was one that you uh, mentioned just before my battery died on my laptop. It was a uh, kite. What was it? I kite. Surf. I kite surf. I kite surf. I'm going to check that one out. Yeah. Brooks Another and... one that um, I just found too is called PPG Flyer, and um, it's a really good one. It's free and it's very similar to the Skyfly High. Cool. Yeah, I think I used to use that app. It was kind of a quick show there, Sean. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so, it was like, you oh, want have to charge you if you showed it for. All right. Well, it is uh, eight thirty. So how about we do 30 more minutes, but we do an after show where we can bring on anybody in the super chat that wants to jump on the panel. Does that sound good? Sounds good. Okay, okay, pal. What's that? I said okie dokie, pal. Okie dokie. All right, so I'm gonna enable the waiting room. And uh, while I find the meeting ID and passcode, was there any other questions um, in the chat? or on the panel for Mark and Elena? There is a really nice question here by Alex. Interesting question. Do you guys fly or do, do you find yourself flying for YouTube videos or do you fly for fun mostly and happen to make YouTube? Both. Yeah. I'd say too though, sometimes when we set out to like actually make a YouTube video, they end up being so much fun like the popcorn video where we threw we once threw like this huge bag of popcorn i thought it was silly mark kept this nasty stale popcorn for like a year i actually had the army <laughs> the army some korean gave it to me and um yeah. <laughs> these koreans gave us this huge bag it was huge and i literally i put it in the uh the I think it got shipped back on a plane or what, however they ship our stuff back in some kind of a crate and uh, popcorn made it all the way back to Louisiana. I think it was like a year and a half later, I threw that popcorn from a paramotor. <laughs> How many kernels? How many kernels did you eat, Elena? None. <laughs> there was, I think some landed in her wing, which like opened up her wing like a few months ago and there was popcorn, popcorn in there. In so it. that would make it like a <laughs> year old popcorn. I tried to get Mark to throw it away so many times. Mark was like, no, I'm going to make a video with this. I'm like, you've had it for over a year. It's nasty, stale popcorn. Throw it away. <laughs> yeah. And then when we finally did it, it was so funny. It was really, that was fun. Um, I love it. That's a cool story. I love that. 
And now I have some more expired popcorn. I told her not to throw it away because I want to throw it in a thermal and see if it'll like ride up with me. This is way oh, less that would be cool. I didn't even think about something like that. Yeah, yeah that is I a good know. idea. I know like lightweight stuff does. Like, when I'm thermaling and I see like a feather or a leaf like in front of me, I'm like, I might be hitting a thermal soon. Or like if I smell cow poop at like 5,000 feet, I'm like, <laughs> that thermal was established right down there at that cow pasture it's like so i wonder if popcorn would would climb with me that's great might be too heavy i think if i saw leaves going past me i'd be wanting to get out of the air really fast yeah right you're like why are these going up and i'm going down exactly a dirt devil Ooh. what is it i don't know what you get an indicator have you ever flown and looked up at your lines and all you see is spider webs? Yeah. Yes. A bunch of Charlotte web babies. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, that's like from the movie. I think I actually put in my video one time, I mentioned that. Oh, it's and so then I, funny. I took a clip from Charlotte's web where like they all start, they all go off onto their journey into the sky. <laughs> but uh, yes. the pig's name. Will it? No, oh, Wilbur. No. Wilbur. Wilbur. He's like, where are you guys going? And and they're like flying away. And Mark put a caption and it was like, we're going to fly into Mark's wing. <laughs> I don't That's know. good. Uh, I wish I could remember what video it was too. It was so funny. Yeah. That was my favorite book growing up. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, I think it's one of the first books I read. It's a good. All one. the way through, you know. Great nice. movie because I don't read much. Same. <laughs> hey man, that's okay. Don't you worry about it now, Bo. And I can never oh, remember if, if I can never remember. Is it Babe or Wilbur, right? Oh, I like Babe. I too. love Babe too, yeah. That'll do. Oh, Ram, you. <laughs> That'll do, Piggy. That will do. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> So I can't believe she just <laughs> ran you. We got uh, another question. We got another question here from James. He's wondering whether you ever see yourself flying helicopters again for a living. Yeah, I should be flying one soon. Our, our one of our local uh, paramotor friends just bought a helicopter, so and he's learning. <laughs> learning. <laughs> Why are you laughing? He does that to everyone. Don't take it personal. He, he's laughing because it's ridiculous that someone bought a helicopter that are so expensive. He's he's just a very happy guy, which is awesome. That's, <laughs> That's not right. happy. he's very positive, very happy. Yeah, but, when he laughs, then I start laughing. I don't even know what he's laughing at, but he's laughing like oh, so so it laugh. was the whole <laughs> my ram you thing, okay? Sorry. <laughs> He, he reminds me of uh, Richard, <laughs> one of our local Richard actually. But yeah, so our, our buddy Bill bought a helicopter. He's getting helicopter training, and so he wants me to fly in his helicopter with him. And said it, I wanted to be a flight instructor that he'd actually let me use his helicopter. So you never know. There you go. That works. Yeah. yeah. We are officially in the after show, ladies and gentlemen. So if you want to jump on and uh, just hang with us and and talk with Mark and Elena Honeycutt and the rest of us in real life, not through a chat, you're more than welcome to join us. Also, if you'd like some of these wonderful stickers that we got from uh, carepp.com, which is Jim's company, uh, just let me know. You can contact me by texting me on my cell phone, 501-747-3558, to say, hey, this is whoever you are, and I'd like some free stickers. And if you already won some or asked for some over the last couple of weeks, sorry, I didn't have any, but I have some now, and I will send them out very, very soon. So please text me and let me know. I'll put that in the chat real quick. John Wayne's in the house. What's up, bud? Hey, John Wayne. What's up, cowboy? Man, he is the only person I know that can withstand 90 degree temperatures wearing a freaking long sleeve <laughs> thermos. I'm one of them uh, fleece, whatever it is, shirts. He's a tough man. Tough he is. He's a tough cowboy. John Wayne. John Wayne, the real John Wayne. Uh, Todd has a lot of bad apples, but he knows. 
I bought the flat products rider with the factory R. Todd missed the part of the show where we told everybody that because he doesn't care about us. Yeah. <laughs> So I thought you test flew the factory R. Yeah, on um on a limitless from Aviator PPG. Oh, okay. So how was the limitless? What did does it what was it like to fly? Um, I I thought it was fine. I mean I think the fit and finish looks really good. It looked it looks like a good paramotor. It's really customizable. Like you can literally like make the swing arms go up or down from where they connect you can move you can widen them you can bring one out further one way or the other um huh. they might i don't know a ton about it maybe they even have more customization that like if you call you can do certain things um because the company they're working with is uh has really helped them customize things but in flight i mean it was it was fine i mean i'm used to a fly that has like stellar torque compensation so it was oh, different motor. What's up? Different motors. Is, is, isn't that the one that could like you could put different motors on it without much trouble at all? I think it, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I didn't ask him about that. I I just flew the factory R on it, which had a lot of power. <laughs> Something to the 303. Right. Right on. Yeah. yeah. That's right. We um had uh we we Last um, was it last episode we checked to see or we asked how many people we think was going to be over at bad apples we had that little contest going. <clears throat> so how many people actually made it to bad apples what's the official count and uh, does anybody have that list that we did last week. I do. Oh, my goodness. I do. I saved it with Dave. Dave Wolf. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yep. I've got it because I'm annoyed. Hang on. Can't go over. Oh, Shut up, Will. Yeah, so what we did last week, in case you didn't join us, what we did is we, we guessed at how many official pilots were registered or going to be registered at Bad Apples. And uh, whoever won gets to win some free stickers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I forgot about that. That's right. Way more than 301. You gotta be. That's great. Well, Todd would know. So while uh, DP is finding yeah, sure. that out, we will continue chatting uh, a little bit. So we got a couple of people that jumped in. John Wayne, Riverford Cassidy, uh, Austin jumped on. Um, you guys have any questions for Mark and Elaine? Or just hanging out with us? Hanging out. All right, good deal. <laughs> The more the merrier. Although uh, I, I can't say I do really enjoy Mark's videos. Um, it's pretty good, pretty good entertainment. Thanks, man. Yeah, man. I really enjoyed the one where you were trying to launch from what is that your front yard or side the yard? Driveway or video. That <laughs> one was gnarly. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Man. <laughs> that was awesome. You had me worried. <laughs> yeah, that was that was fun. I just um actually I, I tore two of my gliders doing that so it was it was definitely oh my gosh it was a costly event unfortunately yeah well i knew you i knew you tore one at you i didn't know you tore two of them really yes my successful flights from there were all i think both on the buzz z5 um and that one i tore i think it hit a bush and like just <laughs> tore the leading edge and i didn't even realize it i might have even launched successfully with it like that it's just such a tight spot like it's just not, yeah it's just not worth yeah. it it's a super gimmicky spot because it's tough to fly from you have to have strong winds so you can like bring up the wing and take off in two steps and then um and then you're launching you're putting your wing in a dead spot so it's hard to inflate it even when there are strong winds and then uh yeah it's tight so i i grabbed a stump that i didn't even know was there so have you ever launched from there on the first try no i don't think so no yeah. Well, when I first try is in like first inflation? No. Yeah. I guess conditions have to be like perfect, you know, and some luck on your side too. Yeah. It's just like, I mean, trying to inflate a wing on a hill on a like 
I don't know how to explain it. It's, yeah, it's just it's it's tough. A wing and a prayer. I have to lay out my wing. I do have a question real quick. If uh, since you have so many different wings and you've been flying for so long, um, if you were happen to uh, land in a tree or something like that, would you go through and try to look at the wing yourself or would you send it in to a professional to have your wing checked? And well, coming from someone who has professionally landed in a couple trees. Uh, um, <laughs> I don't think I inspected either one <laughs> and I flew them and yeah, without inspection ever. And they were both fine. I just personally inspected it myself and uh, never had any issues. That's um, good. But I, it's not a bad, it, like if you, it depends on if you like were to come down hard and like on his reserve toss or something. But um, at that point he had already busted lines anyways, but yeah, I mean, it's not a bad idea to send it in for an inspection. Do you regularly send in your wing for inspection or do you inspect them yourself? Uh, I would send it in, you know, in the standard um, time frame it says on the wing, like two years or 100 hours or whatever. It depends gotcha. on if you leave it in the sun more than other wings, I guess. And real quick, if you are in the super chat and you do fly paramotors, how often do you send out your wing? Do you do what the manufacturer says? Do you inspect it yourself? let me know in the super chat thank you the dp did you get that taken care of you figured it out yet or are you still looking oh well, sure did sean what do you want to know here i got all kinds of numbers here from all well the, the people. first first of all what is the official number of registered pilots from bad apples does anybody know 301 i heard 301 i heard 301 <laughs> I heard what 350, we, but I don't know. 301, I'm oh. sure. Well, no, I didn't win. 350? No. I heard I heard 350. I heard 301. I heard all sorts of numbers. Anybody know the Lots official? of lies. Lots of lies. No, I have nothing official. Why didn't why three, isn't David three, say something? He's in the chat. Who? David 301 Wolf. was announced by David. Yeah. yeah come on, Volvi. Well, 301. Okay, yeah, okay. I was four five zero and Dave Wolf happened to be four five one. How strange is that? Anyway. Okay. Wow. I just looked at the super chat. Everybody's saying 301. Okay. Well, shoot. I guess I should have looked at the super chat before asking everyone. Okay. So the official well, is 301. Dave okay, Wolf then. just said officially 301. Okay. So from that night, then okay. that means John Wayne wins with 250 because. What? Oh, the no. next lowest one is 350 no. from you, Sean. No, 280, I guess. Two, nine. How many How many total? 301 was the total. My guess was 289. 301 was the total. Yeah. Yeah, 301 was the official count at Bad Apples. Said. Yep, so Will had 289. Sean had three five zero. Hmm. Yeah, that's the next closest. What is so that? Will had Will had two eighty nine, and Sean had three fifty. So looks well, I like guess Will I was expecting it. more. Yeah. But there's a lot of guys you didn't register. I bet. Probably. <laughs> well, well. So screw <laughs> this. Well, I mean, I, I guess, the, I mean, we, you know, it's just a fun thing that we just did. And, and you know, we we're looking at the official registered pilots. Um, Sorry. Wow. I don't know. You got to slow was. down on that Dairy Queen drive. -thru. Yeah, that was, <laughs> I, I think it's he's on his, are you on your, are you on your Segway? Because that thing is really hauling some butt, dude. <laughs> it started to rain. And when that happens, I haul some butt. You got that new nine bot or something there, man? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's something that I need to ask uh, Mark and Lana. Do you guys have uh, any personal um, uh, wheeled things that you like, like the nine bots or um, or electric bikes, maybe one wheels? Or what, what do you guys uh, have as far as like a personal um, Bicycles, we electric have, thingy. We would love to have all those toys. We just Don't even start, Mark. Tell them the truth. <laughs> uh, every time we're at the training field, the 
Brooke, I'm always stealing Brooke's one wheel. He brings it and sets it out, and then I step on it and use it. <laughs> um, the, 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 the David, the David Wolf in the chat said, more importantly, what was the grand total raise for Resurgence PPG? Amen. Someone and I kind of know the answer to that. <laughs> and I do not know, but... I want to say it was thirty thousand dollars somewhere thereabouts. Holy smokes! Tell me about it. It's Will incredible. back your camera up. I don't want to see your lips like that. <laughs> <laughs> we we know that your teeth are white. Thank you very much. Yeah, they're great. Yeah, I tasted it. Thousand dollars is what I heard. Dave in the chat would have the exact number, but it was it was an enormous amount. Okay, yeah. Um, Darren Locklear said thirty thousand. Um, if uh, if that's oh, and James also said thirty thousand. That is incredible. I would say. And it couldn't go to a better cause. I totally agree. That's right. Totally That's agree. Hey, look at how many people we have here right now. Let's do another thumbnail real quick since we have so many people. Is that all right? Oh, gosh. Let's oh, do one gosh. more thumbnail. Keep your glasses on. It's all right. No, I always take them off for pictures. Let me see if I can remember this. Hey, where's my cowboy hat? I think Man. it's I Command Shift 3, right? Four. Four <laughs> is to, to do what we want. Three is to just take the shot, right? Three does the whole screen. Four yeah, I'll, select. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I can... I can can you do it? All right, ready? Three, okay. two, one, cheese. Wait a minute. Did it work? Yeah, it did work. Okay, I got it. You that it? was that was the best oh, one for Mark. Did you see what Mark did? That was incredible. He's so silly. I love him. <laughs> More oh, silly. Thumbnail pictures are like so like stressful, you know? I mean Stressful. Go, okay, let's do a thumbnail. And then I get like, oh my God. Okay, hold on. Okay, I got to put my makeup on. Hold on. I'll be right back. I got a question for Mark and Elena. All right. Have y'all been to Bucky's yet? No, I've never been to one. Dude, look at all these pumps. <laughs> Whoa. It what is a I huge freaking like store. They're coming our way, but let's see it again man, real quick. Oh, wait. Yeah. Hey man, they got circus peanuts. Holy yeah. smokes! We're, hey, we're all walking with you. Uh, like you over two hundred pumps. That's crazy. I've never I seen anything that. like that before, dude. I haven't either. This is the first day. This one's this one is open. I want to oh, go find gas there. Are you in South Carolina? Yeah, South Carolina now. At the brand new one in Florence. Yes. Yes. I Passed right by it like a week or two ago, and I wanted to go so bad, but it wasn't open yet. Yeah, me too. I pulled off the interstate and everything, and it said closed. And like, <laughs> everything. <laughs> everything. Yeah, and everything. <laughs> was that funny, Dave? <laughs> it was. I pulled off the interstate and everything. And everything. <laughs> Whatever else you could add to pulling off the interstate, I did it. <laughs> I Thank you. Holy <laughs> mackerel, look at that. He's looking no, that is for the ice cream right now, man. He's going for the ice cream. He's going for a blizzard. Dude, look, at all those, look at all those ceiling lights in there. Yeah, he's he's going for air. Air. <laughs> well, man, I tell you, this has been a really, really fun, entertaining podcast. I've really enjoyed this a lot. Mark and Elena, you guys are so adorable, sweet, humble. Yes, they are. You guys are amazing. I and I thank you guys so much for jumping on and and uh, sharing your time with us. Yeah, absolutely. It was a good time. Absolutely. Uh, thank you. Oh, my pleasure. It's always good to see you guys. I saw you guys la uh, last year at Bad Apples. So it's been a long time since since we actually hung out, hung out. We need Come to hang out even more. Shiners. Yeah, moonshiners. Yeah, moonshiners is coming up. Yeah. So might have to do that since I miss bad apples. <sighs> Cannot believe I miss bad apples. I think moon. It's definitely moonshiners for me. Absolutely. I'm planning on going to moonshiners. Yeah. Gosh, didn't moonshiners suck though last year? No <laughs> way. Weather. The wind <laughs> was weird, but the but the company was amazing. 
Yeah, but the, the winds were just awesome in the clouds. The wind yeah, over there is always yeah. so gnarly. Yeah, just pick a direction. But to have that <laughs> freaking stream right there, right next to the field as a diversion or something to do during the day, it's awesome. Like yeah, like landing good, in it? Good trout yeah, fishing in Rome Creek. Like landing in it, Will? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like setting up a tent or a canopy and just sitting your chair in there and sitting around in a circle and yeah, you know, just kind of chilling. I really did like that. I uh, just really I, I had a blast there too. Yeah, you can do that at our training field. You can uh there's a creek right there. You can uh you can get in there when it gets too hot while you're kiting. Oh, right. Yeah. The training field is is it a big enough training field that maybe you could hold like a your very own flying oh yeah it's it'd be perfect for that the problem is it's a it's a private sod farm uh, so i doubt he would allow it and but he does want to get trained to fly the owner so you never know he might change his um he might change his opinion on that if um but it's still like a private place we don't tell people about unless they're <laughs> like hit us up and we get them to do the proper chain of events i got you so oh. 259 is how many pumps there are. Oh, jeez. Thank you, Will. Oh, I just go to sleep yeah. now. <laughs> well, he got his 10,000 steps in. Yeah, man. I can't wait till they come, you know, to North Carolina. They're not dead. Love y'all. See you. Thanks so, for laughing at us all night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he put himself on mute so we can't hear him laughing. <laughs> Mute. I'm good. Well, I'm good. On your up I love you guys. Seriously. Yeah. yeah and it's good to see you, DP. It's been a while. Thank you. Buddy. I'm gonna yeah. see you all at the next flying. Damn it all. Absolutely. Cool. And and I saw your post on uh, Facebook. Congratulations. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. I love going under the knife. It's so nice. Oh, <laughs> yeah. well, um, love you. Any other questions uh, before we call this a night? Uh, any questions in the super chat? Any questions or anything on the panel? Flying Flamingo Jade, good to see you, girl. Thank hey. you. Hi, everybody. Hey. hey. Hi. Hey. <laughs> Hi, Will. Hey. Oh, I thought you were leaving. Are you leaving? You're no, waving. I was waving to Jade. Oh, yeah. OK, OK. We we couldn't oh, really see the direction you were waving at. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, Mark and Elena, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for your time. Um, you guys are awesome. The cutest couples uh, uh, flying I've ever seen. Ever, and, ever. Uh, can't wait to, to see you at Moonshiners. Um, and where else are we safe? Um, uh, Dave Purdens and EFD. EFD. I'm going to try to make it to at least one of these coming up. So... Uh, appreciate you all uh, for jumping on um, and, and hanging out with us. John Wayne for jumping on and Austin Riverford Cassidy. Thank you guys for jumping on and hanging out with us. Uh, Flying Flamingo Jade, Brooke, uh, Paramom USA, Linda Anderson. Thank you for, for being with us and uh, being our cheerleader yeah. and getting people to be on the show. I mean, you got, I mean, you were able to get Mark and Elena Honeycutt. I owe you. I owe you five bucks. <laughs> uh, well, I couldn't do without Brooke. But you know, then Brooke lets me know, and then then I reminded Mark. I said, "Okay, you got to show on Monday your time to shine." And I always put a little reminder in there on Fridays or Sundays, so the guys know, you know, they can get a re know, you know, what's going on. And yeah, yeah. Thank you, Brooke. Yeah, thank you, Brooke. Thank, thank you, Mark you. and Elena. Thanks, Brooke. Absolutely. And Jim for, for printing out all these things from Canada that smell like maple syrup. So when you get them, just go, oh, it smells like maple syrup. It smells like Canada, eh? That's what it's all about. And Will Fly PPG, all of his awesome videos at willflyppg.com. Mark and Elena, uh, Honeycut, all of their information is down below. Their links for YouTube and everything. So make sure you go there and subscribe if you haven't already. So um, subscribe. Hit that bell notification. Something's, something's coming in the works that they said that they can't tell us about that you got to. So hit that bell notification. Go there and, and hit that up. I saw Elena's um, YouTube. You haven't posted anything about two years. So are you just posting everything together on one channel? Yeah, pretty much once we got married and we were together all the time, it just didn't make sense. 
to be <laughs> separate videos anymore. Absolutely. There you go. Absolutely. Who knows? Maybe one of these days I'll just like randomly throw one up there again. Absolutely. Now remember, tomorrow uh, there's also another podcast, uh, uh, Par Paramore Hangouts with uh, Shane and Eric and Will. Who else? Will is on. And Mark. And Mark McElroy. That's right. From uh, paralifeppg.com, and if you don't, if you haven't, if you want a really good shirt, go to uh, paralifeppg.com. Mark has the best, softest, amazing shirts ever. Um, I have a merch uh, a thing too that helps support this channel. I love ppg.com, and you can always look down below, and uh, we have some things uh, uh, underneath this video. Uh, that helps support the show we don't have sponsors we just have you guys so anything in the super chat just goes to buying more stickers sending them out and all that fun stuff so we definitely appreciate everything you guys do also on uh so that's uh ppglear.com l-e-a-r that's tomorrow's podcast then on wednesday you got flying flamingo jade all girl podcast she's had astronauts on her podcast make sure you go and check her out at paramotorgirl.com on Wednesdays. And then of course, on Thursdays, we got the mom of a very famous person. Linda, yeah. tell us about what's going on on Thursdays. My awesomest son, Robert Michaels. Thursday night, paraglidingtalk.com. Yeah, come yeah. and hang out. Always I a good show. love it. Always, always. Uh, so amazing well. amazing. You guys don't go anywhere. We're going to kill this live stream and chat for just a couple minutes. Um, and uh, uh, then we'll just say goodbye. But um, uh, y'all have a great day. Thank you very much for going over to PPG Grandpa's Paramotor Podcast, clearproptv.com, paratalk.org. If you can remember all that stuff, just go there and check it out. It's really cool and amazing. We love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow yeah, on uh, Eric's. We'll see you uh, uh, yeah. on Wednesday on Flying Familia J's. And of course, on Thursday over at uh, that that one guy that, that flies. Um, Paragliding Talk. Uh, I love it when you say it. It's so awesome. Y'all have a great evening and thanks again. We'll see you later. Good night. Hey, Bye. You guys stay 